I have on numerous occasions had the need for executing some code in set intervals, that being health check applications or any other scheduled task. So when dealing with serverless applications in AWS, how do you do that? More specifically, using AWS Lambda. Introducing AWS Event Bridge Scheduler. As per the AWS documentation, Amazon Event Bridge Scheduler is a serverless scheduler that allows you to create, run, and manage tasks from one central managed service. In other words, you can use Event Bridge Scheduler to trigger or send events to many of the AWS services, of course, including AWS Lambda functions. You can configure what data the event should contain and when as well as how often it's sent. In my demo, I want to run a Lambda function on an hourly schedule. What the function does is not important for this video, but in my case, it's only printing the current date. Firstly, I'm going to show you how it's done using the AWS console. Afterwards, I'm going to do the same thing using Terraform. Now that we know what we want to achieve, let's go ahead and implement it. In the AWS console, let's go over to Lambda. You can see that I have already created a Lambda function, since creating the Lambda function was not what I wanted to show in this video. If you want to learn more about that, I suggest go watch one of my previous Lambda videos. This Lambda function is like any other, nothing special, just a Lambda function written in Python. And as I said earlier, it's only printing today's date to AWS CloudWatch. Now that we know what to expect, given that we run this function, it's time to create our scheduled trigger. There are several ways to add a scheduled trigger to this Lambda function. Today, I'm going to show you one of them. So over to the event bridge console. Under scheduler, click on schedules. Once here, click on create schedule. Give the schedule a name. I'll call mine print date hourly. Next, the scheduled pattern. Under occurrence, you can choose if this is going to be a one-time schedule or if you want the scheduled event to be recurring. I want it to be recurring, so I'll select that. Then the time zone is automatically set to my local time zone, which is what I want. Then there is the schedule type. If you need more advanced fine tuning of the schedule, I suggest using cron based schedule. But since my only requirement is that I want to run my Lambda function once every hour, I'll select rate-based schedule. In the rate expression, I'll put in the number one and hours as unit. If you are flexible about when within the schedule you want your event to be sent, you could set a flexible time window. This could be useful if you want to have some randomness in when it is sent. I'll select off. Under time frame, we could set a specific start and end time for our schedule. I won't bother with this, so in my case, the first event should be sent any moment after I'm done creating this schedule, and it will continue indefinitely. Hit next. Before we continue, if you like my videos and want to learn more about serverless and AWS, please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. Here we can select our target. In our case, this is going to be a Lambda function. Now select the Lambda function. Under payload, you could provide any information you want as input to your Lambda function. Hit next to go to the settings section. At the top, make sure the schedule state is enabled. If we had set an end date for our schedule, we could have under action after schedule completion 
for example, have set it to delete the schedule after the last event is sent. The next section we want to configure is retry policy and dead letter Q. Here we can enable the retries, set the maximum age of an event and the amount of attempts. This is in case that the target, or in our case the Lambda function, should produce an error while processing our scheduled event. For my demo, I'll let it be as default. I will also skip enabling that letter Q, but this could be a good idea to configure if you, for example, want to perform some action given that the event should fail. If you wanted to set a custom encryption key for your events, you could do that here. For event bridge schedule to be allowed to invoke our Lambda function, we need to configure some permissions. Here I will let AWS configure an IAM role and policy for me. You could also use a custom IAM role if you so wanted. If we now hit next, we can review our configuration and lastly hit create schedule. The schedule is now successfully created and in a few minutes we should see our first invocation of our Lambda function. I'll pause the video until then. A few minutes have now passed and I have opened the Lambda console again. If we click on the monitor tab, we should see an invocation. And yes, we have. We now have a functioning event bridge schedule, which invokes our Lambda function every hour forever. So don't forget to delete it if you don't need it anymore. Now that we have seen how this is done using the AWS console, it's time to do the same thing using Terraform. Open your code IDE of choice. As mentioned in my previous Terraform demos, I like to put the Terraform and AWS provider config in a separate config.tf file. The rest I will write inside my main.tf file. Since the topic of this video isn't how to create a Lambda function, I will make use of the already existing Lambda function I showed you in the console demo. But we still need to extract some information from it, so I'll start by defining a data source of type AWS Lambda function and provide the Lambda function name. Next, I want to create an IAM role, which our event bridge scheduler needs to be allowed to invoke our Lambda function. Within this AWS IAM role resource, I'll define a value for the assume role policy parameter. It should look something like this. Here we can see that we allow the AWS service called scheduler to assume this IAM role. We also need to define a resource of type AWS IAM role policy. This is to define what actions are allowed when this role is assumed. It should look something like this, where the action is a lambda invoke function. The effect should, as always, be allow, since we want to allow, not deny this action. Lastly, the resource should point to the lambda function data source object, more specifically, extracting the ARN. To connect the policy to the IAM role, we also need to set the role parameter, but since I'm using IntelliJ as my code editor, it has pre-filled this parameter since it was the only IAM role in this file. Now that we have the IAM role and policy defined, it's time to create the schedule resource. Create a resource of type AWS scheduler schedule. Within it, set the schedule expression to whatever you want it to be. I want to use a rate expression and set it to once every hour. If you want, you can instead use chrono expression if that better suits your needs. 
give the schedule a name and define a block called flexible time window. This is where you can define if you want the execution of the schedule to be flexible. For example, you may not want the execution to happen on the exact same time every hour, then you can set the mode to flexible and define a time window. I want it to run exactly every hour, so I'll set this mode to off. The last property we need to set is the target. This is a block that requires two parameters. First, the target arn, and that is of course going to be the lambda function. So again, reference the lambda data source to extract the arn. The second parameter is the im role this schedule should use to trigger this target. So here we should of course reference the im role we created above. Now we have all the resources we need and all that's left is to deploy it. Open a terminal in the directory where we have your code and run a Terraform in it. After you have done that, you can run Terraform apply. And if the output looks okay, type in yes and hit enter. After a few seconds, everything should be deployed. And if we go over to the AWS console, we should be able to see the new schedule. And yay, there it is. All that's left to say now is until next time, happy coding.